Hello. Welcome to another of our digital slide review and sign out sessions. I'm Lewis Hassel, Professor of Pathology at the University of Oklahoma. Our program is part of Path Presenter, a joint endeavor with the Digital Pathology Association and uh, the Digital and uh, Path Presenter, uh, the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy. There you see it right at the bottom of the screen there. We put together a variety of digital slide cases for educational and instructive use and allow you to review the digital slides along with hearing a little bit of our discussion. So our case today comes to the realm of GYN path. It's a middle-aged woman, 40 years old, with a vulvar mass. It doesn't seem to have a surface connection. Uh, it seems sort of sharply circumscribed. <clears throat> and it's uh, slightly uh, lateral, uh, not a midline, um, and sort of uh, juxtaposed the uh, labia majora. So. Uh, what sorts of things can cause subsurface tumors in the vulva? What should the clinicians be thinking about? What should we be thinking about? Well, of course, there are a variety of structures here that can give rise to cysts or tumors. Uh, and these include the, the epithelia adnexa of the skin, uh, everything from benign inclusion cysts to adnexal uh, tumors. Uh, Bartholin glands sometimes uh, live in this area and can produce cystic lesions or tumors. Uh, we've mentioned the skin adnexal tumors. And then we also have the milk line that in, uh, involves this area, which can lead to several uh, mammary type tumors, which uh, also uh, are relatively unique to this area. A little more anteriorly and more midline usually are the Skeen's gland related lesions. And then of course, uh, endometriosis can involve this area for a variety of reasons. There are a few stromal lesions like fibroepithelial stromal polyp or dermatofibromas that can occur here, just as they might occur in other areas. And then the more uh, concerning one, the aggressive angiomyxoma should always be borne in mind, uh, particularly if it seems to have a deep extension. Well, this lesion was excised uh, fairly simply. As you can see, it's sharply circumscribed. We have the cutaneous surface or the mucosal surface up here. And as we look at this at low power, you're probably already recognizing what this is. A lot of slit-like spaces, sort of angulated uh, structures in an overall lobular pattern. Uh, that's very characteristic of this uh, lesion. Uh, as we come into higher magnification, uh, we get this sense uh, reinforcing that there's sort of a dual epithelial or dual cell type here, maybe a dual cell layer in some areas. Uh, as you can see where we have a few columnar cells along the surface and then uh, some of these more uh, cuboidal underlying cells. Uh, and then as we notice, uh, many of these cells have sort of frilly uh, projecting cytoplasmic uh, luminal uh, buds, uh, or uh, what's been called sort of decapitation secretion. So uh, we don't see much in the way of mitotic activity. There's not uh, any nuclear pleomorphism or significant atypia there. Uh, here again, we can see this sort of dual layer, columnar cells and basal layer cells, uh, as you see here. So uh, cytologically, architecturally, this has the configuration of a benign lesion. Uh, we can see a variety of different uh, cell types, some more apocrine type of cells, as you see here with central uh, eosinophilic and granular cytoplasm. And sometimes these can be quite prominent to uh, compose a majority of, of the tumor. So this is a nice example of the uh, hydratinoma papilliferum. Uh, this is a benign adnexal neoplasm that uh, derives from the modified mammary apocrine glands. And it tends to have this maze-like growth or slit-like pattern with a variety of papillary, glandular, and cystic structures. <clears throat> the dual cell layer is very characteristic. Um, tall columnar cells lining the, the lumen with some deeper cuboidal cells with uh, occasionally more uh, uh, amphiphilic uh, apocrine type cytoplasm. And many of these cells can have apocrine differentiation with so-called decapitation secretion. This has a real strong prevalence for women and involves the peri perianal and vulvar uh, areas uh, most uh, commonly. Uh, immunohistochemistry rarely, if ever, required, but uh, should you do it, uh, these will be hormone receptor positive, including androgen receptor, and have some breast markers, uh, including uh, GCDFP F15 and uh, be positive for CK7. Well, I thought it would be interesting to show you a few other cases just to get a variety of some of the spectrum of disease that we can see in this. 
So here's another lesion. Again, we see sharply circumscribed. But notice in this case that we have uh, geographic areas of very eosinophilic cells. Um, and as we look at these uh, areas here, uh, you can see that uh, this is the uh, very pronounced uh, apocrine and almost sebaceous type of differentiation of this lesion. Uh, over here, we have the more conventional architecture, uh, but here the cells have very abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm um, and a lot of these uh, vacuoles uh, in, the, in the cell cytoplasm that begins to suggest sebaceous differentiation. It's not true sebaceous differentiation. You see the granularity to the cytoplasm here, uh, and again, the decapitation type of secretions uh, that we would expect. So seeing abundant apocrine differentiation can be a, a challenge uh, if it's the predominant feature, but it shouldn't dissuade you from the diagnosis. Uh, another example here, uh, very macrocystic perhaps with a squamous cystic type lesion, uh, almost uh, coming right off the wall. And here you see it uh, not really seemingly adnexal as much as just a portion of this uh, uh, cyst wall uh, per se with uh, squamous epithelium elsewhere in this lesion. Uh, so uh, whether you see it in this uh, setting or in a, an isolated single cystic or solid lesion, uh, the characteristic features, the uh, decapitation secretion uh, should help you and alert you to the diagnosis. Uh, and finally, another example, uh, again, with this sort of uh, divergent differentiation of this lesion, here we see on the right a very characteristic morphology of this tumor, the slit-like papillary structures, the overall cystic architecture, um, and the cytomorphology that we've described well in the previous cases, sometimes forming a little bit more cribriform appearance, uh, as you can see here. Um, and then over here, notice that we begin to get this very pronounced stromal proliferation as well, uh, accentuating an almost fibroadenomatous type of change uh, in this lesion. So uh, again, a benign appearance, a benign morphology, uh, but a sort of combined uh, hydradenoma papilliferum with areas of fibroadenomatous differentiation. Now you can occasionally also get uh, malignant uh, uh, changes in these lesions. Um, and so looking closely at an area such as this, where the architecture is a little bit more subtly different, a little bit more DCIS-like uh, could be uh, worthwhile to consider. Um, and what would cause you to make that diagnosis of a, a DCIS type tumor arising in a hydratinoma papilliferum? Well, if you began to lose uh, that second cell layer, if you have high-grade nuclear atypia or necrosis, uh, then I think that would be uh, certainly justified. If you began to lose the uh, identifiable you know, P63 positive cells, uh, you might consider that diagnosis as well. So uh, just to be aware of some of the vagaries of morphology that can occur in these lesions, uh, they're not always going to uh, be cut and dried uh, single uh, pattern uh, lesions, but can have admixed uh, morphologies. So our final sign-out diagnosis is uh, hydratinoma papilliferum, not eosinophilic uh, endomyometritis, uh, hydratinoma papilliferum. Uh, and uh, we hope that you enjoyed that case. Um, if you did, please uh, hit the like button and uh, share if you find th have friends that you think would enjoy uh, hearing that uh, discussion. And as always, we welcome you to subscribe so that you can catch further releases from our channel. Uh, we appreciate your time and hope that uh, until next time, you'll feel again our gratitude. Thanks for joining us.